Okay, welcome back. This is part two of week four, CIS 204, Unix shell scripting and utilities. And we're going to discuss searching and substitutions. We'll first focus on the power of grep. Uh, it was developed by Ken Thompson and it was available in 74. Uh, it's for use uh, basically with the ed text editor. That was its original uh, use. And it means globally search a regular expression and print. In practice using ed, it was g slash re slash p. So it's valuable for finding occurrences of the specific matching criteria in text files or command output. So let's take a quick peek at an example. Um, and by the way, uh, very often you'll, if somebody says, grep they'll say get regular expression in print which is okay uh, so if I'm going to use this let's take a look at what I've got in this directory this is uh, on uh, my machine so this is Brownsburg it's uh, Ubuntu it will look the same grep will look the same on Ubuntu as it does in CentOS let me list the files here notice I've got this cat dogs dot text and let me do this. Let's grep for bearcat in catsdogs.txt. What does it do? It comes through and it finds a line. And this is one continuous line starting with cats and ending with a dot. And it has bearcat highlighted. That's what grep does. It finds the regular expression that I asked for get the regular expression in print. This is the regular expression I was looking for. This is the file I was looking for it in. So that's interesting. Find things in files? Yeah, okay. Can I find it in multiple files? Well, yeah, but we'll talk about that later. So let's talk about regular expressions using the editor. Oh, okay. Let's VI something. Let's VI, let's see, let's do a more on test one and see what it is. Oh, nice. Okay. Quit. Okay, let's VI test one. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the bottom using the colon. I'm going to ask it to one comma dollar and in this case look for a specific occurrence so globally search for it anywhere on the line match this expression and then print it so let me see if I can find this Audi duty dot text let me do this let's quit out of this Q okay CD dot dot CD dot dot okay get me back up here Let's do a find uh, dot minus name Audi duty. Let's double check here. Audi underbar duty dot text. Yep, Audi underbar duty dot text. And print. Tell me where it's at. <laughs> dash print <laughs> okay there we go okay so uh, let's CD to week three and VI Audi duty dot text there we go okay so what am I looking for here in VI I want to print this uh, one comma dollar G sedans let's see what that does for me here end of the line uh, globally s s yeah. e d a n s space print and those are the lines that have that on it. Now, I've told you never to use ED, but we're going to do it here. 
I'm going to show it to you. You don't need to do this. Ah. <laughs> ed outy duty dot text. Here we go. Okay, much better. Okay, so as you can see, it tells me the uh, character count. Now I do a one comma dollar G globally. Tell me about S sedans, right? Space print. Printed all of the lines that had sedan in it. Interesting. Okay. Sedan, sedans, sedan lowercase, any uppercase sedan? Nope. Okay. So, there you can see how that works. But that's originally what GREP did. And you saw it, pardon me, um, looking for Bearcat. So there's, there's a handful of flavors of grep. There's the original grep, which is basic regular expressions. There's, and it's POSIX, by the way. The POSIX grep is, is different than the original uh, Unix grep. Um, it, you know, it's different in the, in the fact that it's a compiled code and it does not, if you were to take the compiled code um, and do a diff in the Unix environment, uh, a binary diff in the Unix environment, and a binary diff in the Linux environment, they'd, they'd be, they wouldn't be the same. But they do basically the same thing. So the original grep is the POSIX version of the basic grep, regular expressions. There's an extended grep. It chews up more CPU cycles. It does some interesting things. But there's also a grep-e, which will do similar things. There's also a fast grep. Um, it can be invoked as grep dash capital F, but it only matches fixed strings. You can't uh, you can't use substitutions. You can't do some odd duck things that we'll get into here in a bit. So, the classic shell scripting book. Uh, if you've got a copy of that, at table three dot one uh, is there, and it's worth bookmarking. Uh, you can see the meta characters it can use in regular expressions, and and the meta characters are the wild cards. Basically, um, let's take a look at this. Let's bring this website up. So here's the regular expressions, POSIX basics regular expressions. So dot will match any single character. You've seen what the bracket does. Because we did that with the uh, ed command and also inside the vi command where we asked it to match a one or other or a set of characters. So there's another way to do those bracket expressions. And that's with this uh, upper caret. And this is do anything but, match anything but these characters. So, the, but, <laughs> this match anything but, that caret, when it's used on its own outside of the brackets, means go to the start position of the string, match the first position of the string. The dollar sign means match it when it's at the end of the string. The asterisk means match anything. I don't care what it is. An A, B, splat, C matches A, C, A, B, C, A, B, 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 C, uh, an X, Y, Z inside um, the brackets with a splat at the end of it matches X, Y, Z, Z, X, Z, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, Z, Y, and all kinds of other things. Now, we'll get into some other odd duck things here. For instance, the squiggly brace, the, the uh, curly brace. So the basic regular expression is uh, escape the uh, curly brace and match the preceding element X number of times. So three times, if you're looking for A, match it A three times, matches only A, A, A. If you use the M dash, in other words, escape, curly brace, a number, dash, the apostrophe basically, I'm sorry, not dash, escape, close curly brace, 
you'll see that an A3 comma matches A, 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 and as many A's as you want. Now, when we get down here and we've got the M-N, it'll match the preceding element at least N times and not more than, uh, at least M times and not more than N times. So 3 to 5 will match A, 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 and it won't match A, 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 A. So take that as what you need to. Then this other fun thing, this escape parentheses defines a sub-expression. It's treated as a single element. For instance, AB splat matches A, AB, AB, B, and so on. While AB inside the parentheses, they're escaped, by the way, as you can see in the basic regular expression, those are escaped, will match AB, 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 and so on. The string matched within the parentheses can be recalled later, which is interesting, and we'll see that later. So let's take a look at uh, some of the odd duck things we've got in here. Dot AT matches any three character string ending with AT, including hat, cat, and bat. So let's CD back up to here. Let's go to the outside sources. And we'll go to, let's see, exercises, right? So let's grep dot AT in uh, uh, cats, dogs, dot text, right? What am I going to come up with? Yeah, interesting. So there's all the ATs. That, interesting, hat. So there you go. That's how that matches. So let's take a look at this. This HCAT will we'll match all of those. The AT will match everything but a bat. This, this. Uh... So if I do that, let's see here. I'm going to go back here and change this. And I'm going to say match anything but a cat. And let's see what I come up with. Well, it finds the uppercase. It finds the AT and it finds the hat. So there you go. That's how all of this fun stuff works. So you've got an idea how this works. You also have an interesting online reference that you can use to help you build these regular expressions. So let's move forward. So how do I, you know, what is what's it good for well let's do this let me uh, CD back a couple of directories here and I'm going to log into uh, the JCCC so give me a second here while I type in my password hopefully you're not seeing any of this <laughs> and we're in okay let me clean this out let me do this command so you see this grep-i, my last name, Etsy password, right? So let me copy that, and I'll paste that into here, and I will get rid of this. Okay. I have one login, hbecker3, and there is a Brent Becker who's a student. Interesting. Okay, so that's, it'll look for a match. So let me do this with uh, my first name. I should only see one of these, I would think. Yep, okay. This is what you should end up with, and, and you can do this with yourself. Now, what does the dash I do? Well, okay, that does, uh, that runs that thing regardless of case. So let me do this. Let's do this. So here's the manual for grep. Interesting. Here's how you find the help. Here's how you find the version. The pattern. The dash I the dash dash ignore dash case ignore case distinctions okay 
the dash i's ignore case also so online you can find almost everything you want uh, to help you understand what the tool does you can also go to the man pages on the ATS CIS environment there's the dash V for the version extended fixed strings basic regular expression dash I and the POSIX version of dash I dash dash ignore dash case that's ignore case distinctions so let's move forward so here's a basic regular expression the purpose of this command is to find all password entries that contain Hugo lowercase or uppercase okay let's quit out of this clean the screen up do a paste only finds the one let's do this <laughs> there's no Bob's in the Etsy password <laughs> I find that I find that hard to believe but that's okay let's look at it this way there we go notice what it found it found Robert Robert and a lowercase Robert and uppercase Robert here lowercase Robert again okay so the single quotes enclose a regular expression basically that tells grep where to start where to end because I've got that extra little bit in here inside the square brackets that says match an H an uppercase or a lowercase uh, you can try that command but uh, you know it won't be very specific for instance let's go back to this and let's get rid of the ERT so what is it gonna do here is it only gonna find a Rob no notice what it found it found Robin Robert Robinson Robert eight Roberts Robin Al so it found all of that stuff it didn't find just ROB it found anything that had an ROB in it so now you understand now that you have to be a little bit careful in how you deal with this so here we go here's a more specific version of that basic regular expression so let me go back to um, this uh, we'll clean that up and we're gonna do this paste it in there so what is this going to look for it's going to look for Hugo where it's surrounded by a space or a colon there it is and you can find it. there's the colon there's a Hugo and there's a space interesting okay knowing that the password line uses a colon as a separator you can specify a match for a space or a column so what if I do something like this what am I doing here let's take a look at this so I'm asking uh, the system to find a regular expression that starts with a space or a colon has an uppercase H or a lowercase H has at least one more character and then any number of characters and then a space or a colon at the end of it holy moly look what it found found the halt it matches because it has a colon halt and another colon it matches my name Heather Brown Tyler Hundley because it starts with a space ends with a space and it has a colon and it has any number of characters on the other side of it so it this is some of the things you can do by using substitution basically what we've done is we are looking for something that matches a set of criteria uh, and we're telling it to substitute things uh, in that uh, criteria so that's what you're getting with these uh, goofy uh, wildcards and we're going to talk more about wildcards in part three